Good evening, high school football fans. This is the High School Football America radio show for September 28, 2017. I'm Jeff Fisher, host of the show and founder and editor-in-chief of HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. We are at the halfway point of the 2017 high school football regular season. Yes, Alaska and Hawaii uh, are deep into their seasons, uh, heading toward the postseason. But uh, for the most part, all of the uh, lower 48 are about halfway through their seasons. And it's been a fun time up until this point tonight on the show. We're going to take a look at uh, where the teams are at the halfway point of the season, the new High School Football America Top 100 coming out every Sunday. We'll take a look at the latest rankings. Plus, yesterday we put out the uh, bubble teams, the uh, teams that are ranked 101 through 125. We always get the question after we put the rankings out, uh, well, where's my team? How close are we? Well, we uh, gave you that answer at least for the uh, next 25 uh, on Wednesday. The High School Football America Top 100 is a proprietary algorithm. It's not an opinion poll. We bring ours out first, and uh, we just uh, have enjoyed getting this algorithm to the point where everybody thinks it is one of the best in the nation. And uh, again, respect all of our uh, colleagues out there that do the national rankings. It is not easy. We are here for the fans and uh, the, the the players and the coaches and the teams just to give you something to talk about and enjoy. Makes the, uh, the high school football season that much more enjoyable. Ten games uh, within the top 100 Tonight, we had two last night in Florida, where uh, number 74, Booker T. Washington, with that rugged schedule that they always play, got to the 500 mark at 2-2. Of course, they've been impacted just like everybody else in Florida has been by uh, the devastation from Hurricane Irma. But uh, the the tornadoes, they are now at 2-2 after uh, coming up with a shutout win over Edison last night. They are ranked number 74 in the nation. Last week, uh, they lost uh, by a touchdown to uh, number 44. Northwestern by a score of 14-7 and uh, Northwestern a tough task coming up on Saturday night as they take on number two IMG Academy and Bradenton had a chance last week to watch that game live on Facebook the IMG Facebook page and uh, man the Rockets from Miami Central gave the Ascenders everything they could handle before the Ascenders came from behind in the fourth quarter to pick up their 32nd straight victory I want to remind everyone uh, while we're on the subject of watching that on Facebook Live last week. Uh, we tried something on Friday that we're going to do for, throughout the rest of the, the season, which is we uh, began on Facebook Live a live Top 100 scoreboard show. Yes, if you uh, follow us at facebook.com forward slash high school football America, you will be able to watch us uh, tomorrow night as we will. We started right around 7 o'clock Eastern time. We may start a little bit earlier tomorrow to give everybody a preview of what's coming up on the uh, Friday Night Action, but uh, we then, uh, every 30, 45 minutes or so, uh, came on Facebook Live and gave you the updates of what was going on from around the nation, got some great response, and we are going to continue to do that, want to grow that throughout the rest of the season, let your friends know that we're doing it, and uh, we'll be tweeting it out on social media. By the way, speaking of uh, tweeting, we uh, have done it again, we've changed. Uh, Trust me, we've been having problems with Twitter this week. If anybody out there in the listening audience knows anyone that works at Twitter, I don't care if it's a receptionist at this point. I would love to talk to someone because we are having problems with our followers getting notifications. The example of that is uh, Jason Strunk, who writes The Turnaround, and Scott Valise, who writes uh, a, a New Era for us from Onyate High School, and uh, Jason Strunk's at Lubbock High School. When I put at West Texas Coach or at Coach Valise, they're not getting notified. So there's an issue with Twitter, and I would love to talk to someone because right now they are not addressing us on, believe it or not, Twitter. And we've tweeted everybody, Trish Hoffman and I have tweeted everybody from the founders, from Jack, yeah, at Jack. Maybe we should all kind of go together and uh, at Jack him and uh, can't get an answer. So what we have done, though, to kind of simplify some things for people is um, we've gone back to our um, handle for high school football, which is HSFB America. And we have switched Jeff Fisher Media to my personal account. We got rid of Fisher Sports. So anyway, those are the two things. If you want to do something specifically with football, feel free to hit me up at HSFB America. If it's a personal thing, hit me up at Jeff Fisher Media. But anyway, if anybody knows anybody from Twitter out there, please get them in touch with us. I can't believe a communication company does not communicate. And that's what Twitter is doing. Or as Trish Hoffman said, uh, for a social media company, they're not very social. So anyway, uh, let's 
let's get off uh, the soapbox here, but we do want people to tune in to Facebook um, tomorrow night starting, uh, I'm probably going to do a pregame show, I would say, around 6.30 Eastern time. So again, like us at facebook.com forward slash high school football America. Now, back into the top 100, we mentioned that Booker T. Washington rebounded. And Carroll City, the defending 6A champs in Florida, also rebounding. They uh, opened their season with a loss to number 93, uh, Deerfield Beach, by a score of 6-2. Carroll City now 2-1 after last night's shutout victory uh, over uh, Hialeah, Miami Lakes. And uh, they have now won their last two games by a score of 99 to nothing combined. So uh, the Chiefs are on a roll right now. We've got 10 games coming up for you tonight. You can follow all of our games in the top 100 on our live score stream scoreboard. Download the app before you go out to the game, too, to have fun to put up your videos and your photos and let everybody know how your favorite team's doing. But uh, tonight we've got uh, a lot of games in, uh, in Florida and in Texas. Uh, Florida, we've got number 48. Uh, I'm sorry, that's number 50, Armwood taking on Blake. Um, Deerfield Beach, we mentioned them. Uh, They're number 93, taking on Taravella. Uh, Venice taking on Braden River tonight. Uh, in Texas, it's Ryan taking on Denton. Denton Ryan, number uh, 32 in the latest rankings. We've got uh, Duncanville from Texas uh, playing Irving tonight. In, uh, in Tennessee, Montgomery Bell Academy is taking on White Station. So uh, that's, uh, let's see who else. We've got Bishop Gorman, uh, number 15 in the land, taking on Spring Valley. And a big one out here in Southern California, number uh, 37, Chaminade, is uh, taking on Sarah. Uh, Liberty also in there. Uh, but looking right now, the, uh, the, the scoreboard from Scorestream a little uh, behind on the rankings there. So uh, I was struggling there with them for a reason. I, I, I think I'll go to them right now so we we have the right rankings for you but um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll clear that up as we go through the show here tonight. Um, again, check out all of the scores from Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, whenever your team is playing by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Click on the navigation tab where it says scores. You'll get a state-by-state breakout and a top 100 breakout. And uh, again, I can't say enough about the partnership that we have with um, ScoreStream and the great job that they do. The only thing I said last week on Facebook Live was that, uh, you know, when you go out and if your team's losing for gosh sake don't change the score we had one instance last week where uh, somebody uh, ended up putting up the wrong score that we read on Facebook live you know that's just that's just not good sportsmanship there folks if your team is losing 42 to nothing don't go changing it to make it 43 42 that's uh, that's not good plus by the way the algorithm that um, score stream has will boot you out in a hurry so uh, don't try to pull a fast one over on anybody and um that's uh, a fun way, though, to uh, to promote your team, your coaches, your players, and your community by uh, going on ScoreStream and downloading the app, and then putting up those uh, those scores and photographs and and videos. We might as well bring in all of our partners right now uh, before we go into a little bit more about the top 100 games this week. There's five games within the top 100. Want to welcome in, as always, Echo Echo1612.com. You can get to all of our uh, get to all of our sponsors by clicking on uh, their banner ads at High School Football. America.com. Coaches, you get a coaching advantage when you get Echo 1612. Echo is it's known for short. Uh, they're at the college level now. Coaches in Oklahoma making it for coaches around the country. Instant replay on your sidelines eight seconds after the play is finished. You know, folks, if you have this in your hands, coaches, if you have this in your hands, you're going to be a better coach. Your team's going to be a better team. It is a competitive edge. And speaking of competitive edges, how about crossover? Breaking down your game film for you quickly and very concisely, allowing you to do what you do best, which is coach. Get a free demo by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com, clicking on the banner ad, and it will get you a free five-minute demo. It will sell you just that quickly once you see how crossover works. Works. And brought to you tonight by the good folks at Southern Sport, bringing you the debris inhibitor razor, keeping those pesky rubber pellets from field turf out of your shoes, players. That's right. You know how painful they can be or how much of a pain they can be. And moms and dads, you know what it's like to see these little uh, black pellets r- around the house. You may think you've got some rodents in the house after the kids come home because they go everywhere on you. And if you use the special code HSFA when you go to TDIRazor.com, you will get a 30% discount on your order. For those of you not familiar, they've been with us with a, for a long time, but Razor is spelled with a U, so the website again is TDI 
Razor, R-A-Z-U-R.com, 30% discount with the code HSFA. And brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2017, High School Football America teaming up with USA Today High School Sports to give you great national sports coverage and coverage specifically from Southern California. Check them out at USA Today HSS.com. Coming up on the show tonight, we're going to talk some South Carolina football with Reggie Shaw. That's right, Reggie Shaw. And uh, if you look, uh, if you're if you're right now listening to this specifically at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com, you'll see that Reggie is actually spelled Reggie. But uh, coming up in a little bit, uh, Reggie will talk about uh, how he has that interesting name, different pronunciation, or as uh, George Carlin used to say, uh, you can spell your name S M I T H, but if you want to pronounce it Janowski, you're free to do that. But it's a family name, and uh, Coach Shaw will come on here to talk about the Burns Rebels, number 40 in the High School Football America Top 100 this week, coming off of their bye week, Spartanburg this week, and uh, Reggie's going to talk about uh, his team, his program that uh, has won eight state titles over the last couple of decades. A down year last year, uh, Coach Shaw was an assistant there under uh, Bobby Bentley and uh, Bobby now at uh, South Carolina as the running backs coach but uh, lots of tradition there in the town of Duncan South Carolina and uh, down year last year didn't make the playoffs for the first time in a long time many of you may remember uh, one of the famous most famous uh, Burns rebels uh, Marcus Lattimore who uh, went on to play at South Carolina then had that devastating uh, and gruesome knee injury on television that uh, derailed what could have been a promising NFL career uh, Lattimore is a uh, back in uh, it's full circle for him he's back in high school football he is the head coach at Heathwood Hall Episcopal School in South Carolina and uh, we're going to talk to uh, coach Shaw about uh, all of the tradition at uh, at Burns High School and a big win earlier this year that kind of got Got them back into the top 100 as they took down New Jersey power. Don Bosco Prep, we're going to talk about that game and what lies ahead for the 5-0 and Burns Rebels. Also on the show tonight, yes, it's High School Football America, but we're going to be a little bit of High School Football Canada tonight as we're going to talk with uh, Lee Barrett. He is uh, one of the founders of uh, CanadaFootballChat.com. They rank the high school football teams in um in Canada, yeah, there's about 700 of them, and a lot of private schools and a couple of uh, good secondary schools are playing all U.S. football schedules. Uh, Royal Imperial, we've had them on the show before, and uh, Clarkson Football North is coming down to take on the number 11 team in the land as they will take on St. Ignatius this week in Ohio. So we're going to talk some Canada football here tonight on the show. So uh, a big week ahead. We've got five games for you within the top 100, meaning a game featuring two teams within the top 100. Uh, One we've already kind of touched upon already, IMG Academy, number two, a solid number two behind top-ranked Modern Day, but they had to come from behind last week to beat former number 11 Miami Central by a score of uh, 24 to 15. And uh, the Ascenders now have a 32-game win streak. The game is on Saturday. Uh, the Bulls are a tough team. They have, uh, they, I'll tell you, Miami's got a lot of good football, just like they do year in and year out. But it seems like this year there is a lot of strength there. And, again, that uh, IMG Northwestern game, which you will be able to watch on IMG's uh, Facebook page live, just like you can watch our scoreboard show, our Top 100 scoreboard show, tomorrow night. Uh, that game will be on uh, Facebook Live, one of five Top 100 games this week. A big one coming up in Louisville, Kentucky. Tomorrow, they go to Papa John's Stadium, 30,000-plus screaming for uh, Trinity and St. Xavier, an an intense rivalry. And you can read more about it by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Trinity number eight in the High School Football America Top 100. St. X is number 78 in Oklahoma. Bragging rights up for grabs there. Number 29, Tulsa. Tulsa's Union, I should say. Union High School taking on number 67, Owasso. And in New Jersey, once again, just like last week, a couple of uh, top 100 games. Number 28, St. Peter's Prep out of Jersey City taking on number 51, Paramus Catholic. Paramus Catholic lost last week to Bergen Catholic. And speaking of Bergen Catholic, they are... uh, going to play on Saturday against number 31 St. Joseph Regional out of Montvale. So um, some big games this week within the top 100 that will shape things up. We release our top 100 every Sunday 
uh, early afternoon. Tried to beat the NFL games last week, and I think we did do it. Uh, let's quickly shoot through um, the top uh, top 25 for you. We've got a two, couple of new teams, too, this week. Uh, Maine South from Illinois came in at uh, number 97. They're the, they're, they are the defending 8A champ in Illinois, two-time defending Ohio Division Three champ Archbishop Hoban moving up to two this year. They check in at number 99. Let's quickly go through the top 25. Uh, coming out tomorrow, by the way, is our media compilation poll as we put all the national ranking services together. You can check that out at highschoolfootballamerica.com. So it's one modern day. If you have not seen the Monarchs, oh boy, do yourself a favor. If you can catch them on television or in person, this is one of the great teams <laughs> in high school football all time. They are that, that good. Talked about number two, Miami. Uh, uh, IMG Academy with the big game uh, coming up against Miami Northwestern. IMG Academy number two and Northwestern number 44. Allen coming off of its bye week in Texas, uh, taking on Boyd, their number three. Grayson from Georgia, number four. Big game this week against defending 6A Alabama champ Ramsey. Number five, St. Thomas Aquinas. They've already won on Monday, and now tomorrow night they're in Arizona to take on the number four team in Arizona, Centennial. So a big week for Aquinas. A lot of the teams in Florida doing a lot of things to try and adjust to the two weeks of cancellations due to Hurricane Irma. Same thing in Texas, uh, although those games were canceled and just wiped off the slate. Some teams in Florida are trying to uh, reschedule games because of the way the bye weeks fall. Uh, St. John Bosco on a bye week out of California, their number six. What a comeback win over former number 17, now number 27, St. John's in D.C. They were down. They come back from 17 7 down to win 21 17. We talked about number eight, Trinity, and St. X. Speaking of St. X, at number nine, it's St. Xavier out of Ohio, 5-0, and taking on Elder from Ohio. Number 10, South Point, South Carolina, fresh off of its win, shutout win over four-time North uh, defending North Carolina champ Shelby. We mentioned St. Ignatius from Ohio taking on a Canadian team. 12-13, and 13, both idle this week. American Heritage from Plantation, Florida, climbed one spot to 12. St. Joseph's Prep from Philadelphia climbs 14-13. to 13. Miami Central dropped three from 11 to 14 after the IMG loss. Bishop Gorman holds it 15, a notch above uh, De La Salle, which is at 16 from California. The Stags from DeMatha idle this week. They are at number 17, up a skinch, meaning one spot. Uh, ben Davis moves up two from 20 to 18 in Indiana. Corona Centennial only playing nine regular season games. Nobody wants to play the Huskies, so they've got back-to-back idle weeks. Corona Centennial number 19 in the High School Football America Top 100, brought to you by this proprietary algorithm that everyone seems to like, and thank you very much for doing so. Number 20 is Brentwood Academy out of Tennessee. They've got Baylor from Tennessee this week. Number 21, St. Edward from Ohio. Good interstate battle with uh, Naperville Central, one of the top 20 teams in the Midwest. You can check out our regional top 20s every Monday at High School Football America. Hoover from Alabama, number 22, is idle. Number 23, Bingham, a big game in Utah. Uh, State-ranked teams there. Bingham, number one in the state. Uh, Lone Peak, I believe they're number four or five this week. I haven't checked that, but I know they're somewhere around there. Check out all the state rankings by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Bingham, the Miners, number 23. Katie from Texas, number 24, taking on Katie Taylor this week. And breaking into the top 25, Mission Viejo from California. They will play El Toro. Again, if you want to see the entire top 100, please go to highschoolfootballamerica.com and please tune in tomorrow night to Facebook Live, facebook.com forward slash highschoolfootballamerica to get all your scores as they happen. We will update them throughout the night for you. Okay, we are going to take our first break. When we come back, time to talk a little Burns Rebels football out of Duncan, South Carolina. Reggie Shaw coming on the show to talk about the uh, rebirth. It was only one down year, but we'll just call it the rebirth of the Burns Rebels and a 5-0 and start, a good one, and number 40 in the High School Football America Top 100. When we come back, you're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. 
This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, you'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors, and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the debris inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's Crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2017, USA Today High School Sports and High School Football America teaming up to give you great national high school football coverage and coverage specifically from here in Southern California. Check them out at usatodayhss.com. Well, we're going to start the show tonight in South Carolina in Duncan, a program that uh, you've been hearing about for a while. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure how many years ago we had uh, the legendary coach uh, Bobby Ben on the show here. He's now the running backs coach at South Carolina, and there's a new guy in charge who knows a lot about the Rebels because uh, Burns has been good since, uh, well, pretty much since uh, the, the clock turned on uh, 2000, uh, eight state championships, 
Reggie Shaw is the new head coach in his first year. He was the defensive uh, backs coach when uh, Coach Bentley was there, and he's on the line right now. Right now, the Rebels are number 40 in the High School Football America Top 100 that's built with our proprietary algorithm. Big win over New Jersey power Don Bosco Prep, and Coach Shaw's here to talk about uh, that and some of the players that have stepped up here in the first half of the season for his team. Welcome to the show, Coach. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, well, let's let's kind of dial it back a little bit. Obviously, you know the Burns program real well, having been an assistant there, went away to get your your head coaching chops, and uh, a lot of tradition there that everybody around the nation knows uh, when when things were going great with Lattimore there and all that. But uh, a little bit of a tough year last year. You guys didn't make the playoffs for the first time and seems like forever, I guess. So you come back in here, and what are some of the things that you did uh, day one to kind of get the the, the train you know headed in the right direction for the the five and zero start that you've had sure well i think you, you hit the nail on the head there's a lot of tradition and expectation here and so coming back was just uh was trying to i guess you would say rebuilding the culture um trying to bring some of those things back that made burns what was burns and so you know it started with a, a strong discipline and and, and living in the weight room uh, year round uh that was something our program was built on we're not the biggest uh but we are pride ourselves on outworking people and, and being fast and physical and so uh, just trying to get back to the basics um you know evaluating the program from top to bottom but culture was number one um you know, building a selfless culture uh, started with uh, you know just how we approached uh, everything from the weight room to how we dressed um tried to bring uniformity and, and a sense of pride and uh just the guys just balled in but uh, you know you're only as good as your assistants and so we we were able to uh, bring some Burns guys back that really understood this program, and I think that was crucial as well, uh, bringing some former players back and some other guys that uh, were on the same page. Uh, and so just building a family atmosphere uh, from the top down. Uh, it's not about me. It's about we, and that's something that we, we talk about each day, and that's something that we try to live out and how we treat each other. Uh, Coach Bentley did a great job of building a family atmosphere and, and – uh, the guys knew that they were going to be pushed, but they also knew they were going to be loved. And, uh, and so we've tried to just reestablish those, those foundations that this program was built on. Talking to Reggie Shaw, the head coach at Burns High School in South Carolina, and it has been a while since we had Coach Bentley on, and, and I know how special high school football is there to the community. It, it's part of the fabric. Maybe we could take a few moments here to just kind of talk about that blend there because, uh, you know, in a lot of cases around America, we've got uh, teams and, and communities like that where it blends together. What, uh, h- How much fun is it to be a head coach here at a, at a, at a community that, that loves its high school football? Uh, it's kind of like going back in time uh, or, or being out in Texas, some of the pockets of really good high school football, California, Texas, Florida, Georgia, and uh, you know, upper state in South Carolina falls right into that, that scenario. Um, the town shuts down on Friday nights, and uh, this is a, it's, it's not just something to do. It's a priority for the community. And so uh, it's just a sense of pride to, to be 5-0 and again and to get the stands packed again. It's, uh, the town's buzzing. It's a fun, fun town to be here, a fun place to be. Um, you know, the, this football can, can really uh, catapult a school year, uh, you know, and so it's been fun to see the student spirit just soar and, and for those folks to come out and be proud of the product that we're putting on the field on Fridays. And so uh, it's a fun time to be here for my family and, and then for everybody else as well uh, because, uh, you know, it, it wasn't so fun the last year, and that's something that uh, they're not used to around here. First mm-hmm. losing season in about 17 years, and so the expectations were high. The uh, just to coming back and being able to to reestablish that's been really special. Yep, and number 40 right now in the High School Football America Top 100. We're talking Burns Rebels football tonight out of South Carolina. And uh, for for everybody that read the story and then clicked on the link to listen to the show tonight, uh, you, you may ask Jeff, have you lost your mind? His his name is spelled Reggie, and you keep calling him Reggie <laughs> Shaw. So so before we get into the players and what kind of season it's been, uh, Coach, fix, fix everybody up out there. I, I'm not misspeaking or anything here. Uh, Reggie <laughs> Pronounce Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little oh, bit about yeah. that. <laughs> I, I don't know what my parents were thinking. I, I don't know. If, I don't think drugs were legal in the seventies, but uh, <laughs> sometimes I wonder if, if I could go back in time. I would. I'd sock my dad. I think upside the head. What? But uh, there's a there's a story behind it. I give him a hard time about it, and, and it's not the name I would have picked. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, it was a 
family name passed down from a couple of generations, and uh, he had a brother that uh, that died at childbirth, and so he felt that would be a nice way to honor him and uh, for my grandparents' sake. And so uh, it's uh, it's unique; nobody ever gets it right the first time, but uh, you know, hopefully uh, we do things the right way. We leave a lasting impression that uh, it'll be a name that. Uh, people are, are, are glad to, to hear and, and learn how to pronounce. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful story behind it there. And I, I've got to admit, uh, folks, every time I go to say, I, I'm looking at it on the sheet here, <laughs> and there's a little bit of hesitation. So it's just it's just me being a little, uh, getting the brain registered in the right way. Talking to Coach Shaw tonight at Burns High School out of South Carolina, Duncan. They they have uh, come back with a vengeance after a, uh, a losing record last year, first time, as you said, in a long, long time. So, Coach, um, let's, let's talk about a couple of things. Um, and, and, and let's talk about the, the big one. I mean, we know South Carolina football is good, but you know, when you step out of state and take on a, a New Jersey power called Don Bosco Prep, uh, that that's proven something there. You get a 24-21 win over them. Tell me a little bit about that game and what it did in, in the grand scheme of, of setting a tone here early on in the season for you guys. Well, we knew coming in that was one we had circled because it was a chance to get back in the national spotlight, and it was you know just a chance to prove that our program belonged there. And so I was real; our guys were real motivated to play them. We knew they were going to be well coached and, and be very physical. They play a brand of physicality up there that we don't often see down here. And so um, <clears throat> we just kind of wore them down. Uh, they were up twenty-four or twenty-one to a seven, and. Uh, I mean, we talk all the time, it only takes one spark to start a fire. We kept looking for someone to do that. And uh, One of our DBs, A.J. Rogers, who we, we converted over from receivers, had a great year for us, a uh, 6 one corner. Uh, down on the goal line in the red zone, picked off one and took it back about 50 yards of midfield. That just kind of got things rolling. But, you know, it, it, that game goes back to the summer. Our, our strength and conditioning coach, Mike Schrock, is as good as they come. And, you know, we talked about this summer we're – we were going to be the best conditioned team on the field, and uh, that showed in that game. And when we got to the fourth quarter, we were still going strong, and those guys kind of gave out of gas a little bit. And, uh, and so that's how we've been able to, to finish a lot of games. That was a point of emphasis, uh, to be able to finish and to, to finish fast and finish strong. Um, but uh, that spark, like I said, got it started. Uh, our special teams have been incredible as well this year, putting a lot of pressure on punt teams. We were able to block a punt and get a short field, and then uh, got another uh, two, two turnovers there in the fourth quarter. And uh, so defense and special teams really got us back in the game, and then offense was able just to keep chipping away. We're not real big on offense, but uh, we've got some weapons on the edge and two really good running backs and a, a dual-threat quarterback. Uh, and so our motto was just find any way to win. And, and it was a it was an incredible atmosphere. Our fans uh, stayed with us throughout, and uh, – you could barely hear yourself think uh, in the fourth <laughs> quarter there between our band and the fans. It was a it was a hostile environment. It was a lot of fun to to see that back here. It's what makes high school football high school football. That's for sure. Burns Rebels uh, topic of conversation tonight on the show. Reggie Shaw, the head coach, uh, former assistant there in his first year. Uh, Burns number forty in the high school football America top one hundred. Let's get some of those kids in by name. I, I had a chance to look at some of the stats there on Max Prep before starting this interview, and I, I noticed that uh, Brock Carroll, a junior quarterback, dual threats, got some nice numbers. Like you said, some running back. So let's get some of those kids in there by name and and tell me what you what you're liking about them and and, and what's the upside here what what are you pushing them to do over the uh, the, the rest of the regular season to get ready for the postseason sure you know it starts up front we've got five seniors uh we're not big at all but uh those offensive linemen just continue to come and fight and grind every day and just try to get better and just try to try to find a way that's the bottom line we're, we're 220 at best across the front but we're getting on our blocks and the guys are fighters uh it starts with a left tackle Kevin kelly uh be a three-year starter uh center Alex Faulkner, uh, right guard Shimon Young. Uh, left guard has been in rotation. It's been Mitch Hall uh, manning that for most of the year. And then right tackle Walker Bishop. It starts with those guys up front. Um, Brock Carroll's done a great job uh, finding a way. Uh, people have uh, you know, tried to take away our run. We've got two really good running backs. Uh, senior Quez Mays is kind of a power back who can do some things out the backfield as well. Got great hands. Sophomore sensation, though, is uh, Roger Harris. Uh, you'll hear his name uh, a lot to come in the future. Uh, he's already picking up some D1 offers, but uh, he's a total package. He's got speed, power, and, and hands out of the backfield. And, uh, he's just 
continued to just get better and better. Um, he's a return threat as well. Anytime he's, he gets the ball, he can take it the distance. On the edge, we were uh, led by a guy called Mr. Dependable. Uh, Jake Childers has been a uh, slot receiver for us. Just a great possession receiver. Finds a way to get open. Um, outside, uh, we've lost uh, Demarcus Gregory back in the spring. He was a four-star receiver that committed to Ole Miss. And so we challenged our young guys to step up. Somebody had to you know, be the next man up and uh, got a rotation there. Braylon Johnson, a sophomore, I feel real good about is going to have a great career. Uh, but Ben Henson has been the biggest surprise at receiver for us, uh, junior. Uh, that uh, can do it all. He can go to get the vertical ball or, or he can come across the middle or he can, he can take the uh, the screen to the house. And so he's been a great uh, find for us. And then the senior, James Rhodes, out at the other uh, Y position, has done a great job for us. And so just uh, trying to spread the ball out, making defenses defend, uh, you know, east to west in the total field. And so that's that's been a, a big um, plus for us that we're not just one-dimensional. You know, quarterback being able to run the ball uh, we need to is uh, kind of try not to run him too much until we get into the region, you know, just to uh, try to protect him. Uh, defensively, uh, up front, our D-line is, is uh, as good as I've ever coached. Uh, they're, they're fast. They're not real big, but they're very fast. It starts in the middle with Omar Foster and J uh, Armstrong as two D-tackles. When those guys are, are demanding double teams, and uh, you know, it makes the linebacker's job a lot easier. Uh, we've got K.J. Jones backing him up at Mike, who is the Northwestern commit. Very intelligent guy. Uh, K.J. is one of the smartest guys I've ever coached. Uh, his plans are to be a neurosurgeon or a heart surgeon, and I, I've wow. got full confidence <laughs> if I ever needed it, that he can take care of it. Uh, and then uh, we've got some defensive ends that are really athletic. Uh, rolling to uh, on one side, and then uh, Brandon Robson on the other left plays role. But those guys are uh, fighting for the sacks every week. They kind of have a competition going between them. I think Roland's up to about eight sacks so far on the season. Um, linebackers are, are really good. Uh, JoJo Irby's the other back. Jalen Miller is like another coach on the field as well, an outside back. Um, DB's uh, got better and better each week. No means leads us to safety. Uh, A.J. Rogers, I mentioned earlier, moved over from uh, receiver. He's done a great time at corner. Um, R.J. Harris, uh, Rogers' older brother, is the other corner. And then uh, sophomore, another sophomore sensation, Buddy Mack, uh, has done a great job for us. I just appreciate it. Let's let's talk a little bit about um, you know the the competition in, in South Carolina. It's kind of interesting. You guys uh, last year went up to a from four at the top classification to five, and I, I think it's interesting that during the regular season you, you see some foes that you may have to get through again in the in the very tough postseason. What, how does that um, you know affect you when you when you're coaching against some of these games that you have coming down the stretch in the regular season and all that? Do you hold anything back, or it's certainly a grind. I I talk to the coaches in Indiana all the time. It really comes up a lot there too no doubt well i think you can look at it positively or negatively uh, a lot of guys don't want to play a team twice because the old adage is it's hard to beat a team twice and uh, i think there's some truth to that but i think uh, the, the other side is that uh, high school athletics the psychology is is a huge part of it and, and momentum is a big part and so you know, that's the thing that we always talk about with our guys. It's that you are you are planting seeds every time you play someone. As far as the next time that you play them, and how you play them, and so we want to, you know, we want to be physical. We want to beat people every chance we get, and we want to be aggressive. And so that's kind of how we play on all fronts, uh, trying to attack people and create uh, momentum uh, for the future. But. Uh, you know, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you we do hold some things back until the reach. <laughs> We've got a few surprises this week. That most coaches do. Um, you know, you know, you don't want to lay all your cards on the table until you have to. That's exactly right. You got uh, Spartanburg coming up this week. We're talking with Reggie Shaw, the head coach at uh, Burns High School, number 40 in the uh, High School Football America Top 100. And uh, I was joking before we started this interview. I said I, I was going to roll tape, which doesn't exist anymore. So I'm going to ask you the question, what you have up on the on the chalkboard there, which is a grease board probably at this point. What are some of the things that you guys are talking about uh, that you got to check off as it, as it relates to, you know, getting to the postseason and then having a good deep run? What are some of the things you want to see out of this team? 
especially on the improvement side, uh, to, to make sure that this team is back to where you want it to be, which is the Burns tradition? No doubt. I think, uh, number one, it just starts with, with being sound and not making mistakes. You know, I never want to beat ourselves, and that starts with eliminating um, unnecessary penalties. You know, I can I can deal with a hustle penalty with someone going up fighting for a ball, but uh, the holding penalties offsides and just bone, we call them boneheaded penalties. <laughs> we can eliminate those, and, uh, and, and to a minimum, then we feel like we've got a chance. Uh, so that's been a big point of emphasis, making sure that our blocking is we're moving our feet and our hands are inside. It just goes back to fundamentals in our off week. Protecting the football um, has been a big point of emphasis, and so we've done a circuit every day on, on ball security and just trying to be intentional about that. Um, and then uh, trying to create the short field. Uh, you know, there's there's so many stats that uh, if you have to drive 80 yards or, or, or more, then uh, the odds are not in your favor. And so trying to create the short field, trying to create momentum, uh, not beat ourselves, uh, just being fundamentally sound, uh, but then also trying to be multiple. You know, we gave the off, we gave us a chance to self-scout and, and look at what we were doing because as coaches we all have tendencies, and, and so it gave us a chance to evaluate those and hopefully make some changes going forward so that we wouldn't be you know, as predictable in some situations. Well, Coach, we really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk to us tonight and uh, continued success throughout uh, 2017. Again, thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of 2017. Thanks a lot. Appreciate all you do for high school athletics. You're very welcome. Taking a break, coming back with more. You're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. 
Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest decision. Advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. This portion of High School Football America brought to you by USA Today High School Sports. Once again in 2017, High School Football America and USA Today High School Sports teaming up to give you great national high school football coverage and coverage specifically from here in Southern California. Check them out at usatodayhss.com. So I'm talking about national football here in America. High School Football America has America in its name. But you know what? We're going to talk a little Canadian football right now. Canadian high school football. We've done it a couple of times in the past, and uh, there's a guy that I uh, got to meet through our good partners at uh, ScoreStream a few uh, years ago, Lee Barrett. He is the guy behind uh, CanadaFootballChat.com. They do a national ranking up there for their uh, their public schools and their private schools. And coming up this weekend, uh, on Saturday, number 12 in the High School Football America Top 100, St. Ignatius out of Ohio, is going to take on uh, Clarkson Football North, a very good team that sits at the top their private school rankings. And Lee is here to not only talk about his rankings, but give us a real good overview of what it's like uh, in Canada when it comes to, you know, just the inner Canada games and all these teams that are coming down from the north to play high school football in America. Welcome to the show, Lee. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, it's great to have you on here. And, and let's kind of, you know, dive in from the very top of it and, and kind of go down from there, which is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of teams in Ohio. Fans in Ohio know that there are teams that come down here and play strictly American schedules and all that. But why don't you give the, the overview for everybody of what it's like? What's the structure in Canada right now as it relates to high school football? Sure. So, We've been playing uh, football, if, if you believe the historians, as long as Americans have, because, if, again, you believe the historians, Harvard <laughs> played McGill, which is a university out of Montreal, played, I think it was 1874 or something like that, in the first quote-unquote football game. As we know, the, the football has evolved over the years. Uh, in Canada, just to give your audience a little bit of differentiation between the game, and the tackling and block is essentially the same, and the throwing, the passing, and the running, but... We've got 12 guys on the field. The field's longer, the field's wider, and uh, we've got a, a one-yard neutral zone as opposed to a, a zero-yard neutral zone and, and some other subtle rules, but those are the biggest differences. As far as the high school system, uh, like your states, where your states would have state championships and most of the stuff would be administered by a state association, a lot of ours are done by provincially. So of our 10 provinces, there's eight provinces that would have high school football um newfoundland and prince edward island would not they're just small and and never never got into the football playing uh they've got some community ball but no high school uh and then ontario is such a big state that they have a lot of regions within this within ontario so they don't actually play down to a provincial championship they more play down to regional championships because of the geography and you know it's 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 different is that it's not as professionalized as the American game. Uh, it's more of a call it uh, an intramural setup where it's you know it's kind of the sport in the fall that the kids play. Then they'd go on to the next sport, including the coaches in school would probably go on to the next sport. And and uh, there's definitely some people that put some serious time into it and 
and build some serious programs. But, you know, uh, the relativity uh, between the, the, the skill level and the competition, et cetera, wouldn't be quite the same as the United States. Lee Barrett on the line tonight. Uh, CanadaFootballChat.com, you need to check it out. Uh, they do uh, rankings for uh, the public schools and the non-publics, and, and maybe that's where we'll start because the non-publics seem to be the ones that creep down below the border here and take on uh, you know, our teams. I noticed uh, last week that uh, Clarkson Football North uh, lost to Lorraine out of Ohio. I noticed the Petty School out of New Jersey played uh, your St. Joseph's and uh, Royal Imperial uh, losing to Lake Catholic last week. Tell us a little bit about the evolution of that part. Um, how, how did these teams evolve into playing, you know, American football and, and coming down here for all of those games? Yeah, for sure. There, there's always been a little bit of uh, teams going down and playing usually the, a preseason game, a non-conference game, specifically in British Columbia and Ontario because of geography. Uh, maybe even more so in British Columbia because they actually play 11-man American rules in, in British Columbia High School, so there's a little bit more of that north-south um, uh, competition. But as far as similar to basketball, and if you probably if you're a fan of basketball, you've noticed a few more Canadians that are getting drafted and playing. You know the Andrew Wiggins of the world, Jamel Murray, etc. And um, same thing, you know, basketball kind of evolved where more competition was going north-south, and it elevated our athletes. And what happened, a lot of kids in basketball started going down the United States to play high school. And that just opened up more opportunities for them. This is about a 20-year evolution. And then a few teams in Canada started playing an All-American schedule. Well, the same things happened in football, just a little bit later to the party, where about a decade or so ago, many there's probably 100-plus athletes in the United States playing high school football. So what a couple of these programs decided, well, let's try to keep our Canadians at home. However still get exposed them to an American system. So in our non-public rankings, which you'd have eight teams, half of those, four of them play in their own Canadian league. It's a private school league. And then the other half would play in uh, an exclusive non-conference uh, American schedule. Two of those teams are public school. You mentioned Clarkson Secondary School and St. Joseph High School in Ottawa. Those are the public schools and Canada Prep and Royal Imperial being the private schools. So this is a, a fairly recent evolution in the last four to five years. Uh, it, it, again, uh, there's still a long way to go to bridge the gap of competition, but the Clarkson squad and the, and the Canada Prep squad are definitely good teams. Uh, Clarkson, if you, look, if you look at the Max Prep rankings, have defeated a, a couple teams ranked in kind of the 1,200 and and 2,500 range, including McDowell, Pennsylvania, and uh, they beat uh, Cleveland Heights in Cleveland and had a competitive game with Wayne, and as you know, Wayne's a perennial mm-hmm. powerhouse. So it's that's kind of the evolution that's happened in, in the competition against American Lee Barrett on the line talking Canadian football, high school football on the line tonight on High School Football America. And uh, he's part of uh, CanadaFootballChat.com. Check them out. They're ranking everybody. And they we're going to talk a little bit about college, too, because you, you cover everything up there. Um, Lee, and this is a question that gets batted around here, and I was just wondering if, if you're seeing any of it up there with your, your non-privates, which is, you know, um, kids – you know, kind of go into the privates for, for a number of reasons, whether it be uh, more scholarship opportunities as far as exposure, all, all those sort of things. Have you guys seen any of that yet as these, these schools evolve that are coming down south of the border? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's really what drove it was kids looking for NCA scholarship opportunities and, and, and correctly. So, I mean, if you, uh, I always tell kids, if you want to play in the States, go to the States. So that means one of two things, either, go and compete on teams in the United States or go and compete on teams that play American competition. Now, we do have Canadian college football here. It's a 27-team league called U-Sport, so most of the kids will still end up in U-Sport, and, uh, uh, but there's you know more and more, and track this, and, and our top 100 player rankings gives the kids exposure as well. I think about 25 of the kids went to uh, either FBS or FCS teams on our top 100 ranking. So we like to think we've had a little bit to do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't discriminate where the where they go, whether it's south or north of the border. We're we're just going to cheer them on. There's definitely been a more of an emphasis and more of a a realization, and maybe the the, the day of the social media and the internet and all that really helped drive it as well. 
And, and you, you mentioned what you've done there, and congratulations, by the way, because that's that's what you know we believe we do, which is try and promote as much on the student athlete side as we can, give them that exposure and all that. H- have you used the American system, the the rivals, the twenty four seven, the scout dot coms, as kind of the the, the 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 map, if you will, or how, how do you guys break out your top one hundred players and, and promote them, uh, like you said, as, as far as it, whether it's north or south of the border? Sure. Yeah, we definitely. Um look at what other people are doing, you know, try to take some best practices and apply it to what we're doing and, and put a Canadian spin on it. So, um, you know, our ag- algorithm would be different than an American one. However, it's still the same where you're projecting, you know, who's the best prospects. And, you know, as far as kids that are the best prospects on the top of our list tend to be NCA prospects, you know, the, the six foot five, 300 pound old lineman or the, you know, the fourth, four, 40 yard dash receiver will always end up at, at the top. So tell all the kids, you got to pass the athletic test first in order to move on to the next level, be it in the United States or Canada. So we definitely, we do as best we can. We've got some uh, identification combines that will run just to give us a clear picture on the talent. Canada is a vast country and, and, and like the United States, there's, there's a, quite a, a distance gap from one coast to the other coast. So uh, while it's a challenge, we do have our team across the country that evaluate things. And, and uh, you know, we do know since we've been doing the top 100 player ranking, which we're in our fifth year now of doing that, uh, our capacity and our, and our quality of our ranking improves on, on an annual basis. Always trying to educate all of our listeners. Go to CanadaFootballChat.com to learn more. Lee Barrett on the line talking uh, about high school football from Canada. And as we said, a lot of uh, a lot of teams coming down here playing. Uh, Clarkson Football North mm-hmm. taking on uh, this week uh, St. Ignatius in a, in a big game. And then they get uh, number nine uh, St. X out of Cincinnati coming up. Um, we, we talked a lot about the, the, the private so far, but I, I don't want to slight the publics because that's not what I'm about. Tell me a little bit about the, the, the lay of the land there. It does B C play a better brand of football than uh, you know British Columbia, the, the the province there, than than I don't know Ontario. Could you give us a little kind of sense of that on that side yeah. of things? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely what we have to do, whereas uh, you wouldn't have to do it as much. It's more of a relative ranking because we have some new, some different um, circumstances from province to province. Now, I'll give you a little bit of what that means. So, in British Columbia. They're playing 11-man football, whereas the rest of the country plays 12-man. So it's again, it's tough to evaluate uh, apples to apples when they're playing different rules and, and a slightly different game. Where it gets even more complicated is the Quebec education system is different, where the high school only goes to grade 11, and then they go to play what they call CJP, which is like a junior college league. And um, so now we're and then Ontario allows postgrads to play whereas no one no other province would allow post grad. So what we attempt to do as best possible, we it's what we call a relative ranking. You know, we'll identify where the best players are, how dominant teams are in their region, and and we have a few other algorithms we use, but unlike an American ranking, I know there are some subtle differences in the American rankings too. We have a little more like uh, non subtle differences just with the ages and Mm-hmm. and the different rules that British Columbia is playing. So you definitely have some regions in Ontario that are strong, some regions in Quebec that are strong, some regions in British Columbia, and the Prairie Provinces, which would be Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, have some, some great football, and, and some growing regions on the East Coast. So there's definitely some differences. We have the, some algorithms that, again, we, we attempt to refine and, and on an annual basis. And so it, it's... Uh, there's <laughs> Approximately uh, 700 plus teams, so okay. we're there's there's lots to delve through. Um, so we, there's, there's a, it's a challenge, but again, we've got our uh, uh, we do as good a job I think uh, one could do, and and it's 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 something that people you know gravitate towards, just like your ranking, yep. and they're proud to be on. Uh, co- players love it. Not all coaches do because <laughs> coaches are coaches. But yep. um, you know, as an old washed up coach, I can relate. But that being said, it's it's been a very positive for the for the football community 
and we continue to enjoy to do it. Uh, you made my head spin. I'm glad I don't have to put all those things in there into my algorithm that you just talked about. Good, good, a lot of different yeah. stuff there. Yeah. Lee, Lee Barrett on the line. Check him out at CanadaFootballChat.com. I think I asked one of the coaches this. Uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name. You can help me out. The gentleman from Winnipeg we had on. Uh, is it Kelsey McKay? Is it? Is that, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had him on, and I don't think I asked him this question, so I'll ask this of you. Certainly, football and hockey are two different seasons, but mm-hmm. is one impacting the other? Meaning, as the the football sport grows, does that affect hockey's numbers, or are the seasons separate enough where it really doesn't come into play? Maybe it's a dumb question, but I thought I'd ask it. No, I think it's a it's a valid question. As far as hockey, you know, probably similar to football. I always say people you want to compare Canadian hockey to American football, it's American football is like hockey times 50. It's just from the past, from the development. But that being said, there's uh, hockey, like most sports, if, if you're an elite athlete, you tend to, um, you know, do it year round. So mm-hmm. if you're in the, in the track, you know, when you're in your early teens to be an elite hockey player, you're probably not, um, you know, you're probably not going to play football. So what does happen though is, once you either stop growing or grow too much, you might get back into football when you're in a grade 10 or 11. So what tends to happen is the elite hockey players are already on their path. If they continue on that path, they never play football. But the ones that, you know, figure out hockey's not for them and they're looking for a sport similar to hockey, maybe like football, they get into it a little later potentially. Sure. And, and I'm trying to draw some similarities here. And I guess the next question I would have would be uh, to, and, and I don't know if you play a majority of your games on Fridays or Saturdays, but you know, you know the term, obviously, Friday Night Lights. What, what's a, a typical uh, high school football game in Canada like? Is there a way to compare it to, to what we have down here? I'm sure there are, there's no $60 million or $70 million Taj Mahals like in Texas, but is there a way to equate how the yeah. communities feel about it and what that feel is at a game on a Friday or a Saturday? Yeah, again, it's very regional. Uh, you'll find some areas in the prairies specifically. Uh, you'll find some areas in Quebec that might have a similar feel. Not as many people in the stands, but a similar feel if they're playing a night game. Uh, New Westminster High Acts that are in the, the Vancouver area would get a couple thousand people to their homecoming game on a Friday night. And, and some examples in, in, in Quebec uh, would definitely have that feel. But um, you know, there's definitely not that passion that you'd have in, in specific states like in Ohio, uh, Texas. There's there's nothing close or equivalent. You know, our our passionate football areas tend to be in Quebec and the prairies. Um, it's just kind of taken off that way for maybe different reasons. And then you have some pockets in Ontario, some pockets in British Columbia, where you definitely have some some good followings. There's a college game this weekend called the panda game and it's between universities in the ottawa area ottawa university and carlton they'll get twenty three thousand to that game. so there are some uh, it's more of a unique one-offs that you might get some some big showings uh, some rivalries and stuff like that but uh, on a year in you know a weekend week out basis uh you know, there could be some high school football games that are played during the middle of the week on a 1 p.m., and there might be, you know, 20 people on the stands. But you can get that kind of outlier matchup where there are a lot of people in the stands. Oh, that's a good picture you painted there. Lee Barrett on the line, CanadaFootballChat.com. We're going to talk about your site in just a second, but you touched upon college a couple of times in your descriptions here, um, and, and you mentioned, obviously, much smaller scale than what we have down here in the States, but it kind, of, kind of paint that picture for the, the listeners out there. I mean, what, what level are we talking about here? How, how would you describe the, the Canadian college football experience? Um, the Canadian college football experience that I played and coached in is a, you know, it, it's, it's grown in the last, I would say, decade to 15 years. Uh, reasons being there's been more resources put into the game, uh, whether they've had some, uh, there's a team in Quebec City that gets 13,000 people to a game and does real well on the marketing and the concessions, etc. And then there's just some places that have done well. Uh, with getting some, you know, quite uh, substantial donors uh, to d- donate some money that would they put into some uh, either capital expenditures, whether it be a stadium or a weight room or stuff like that. So I would say the Canadian uh, college game 
in the last 15 years has really taken to another level. Now, the unintended consequences of that, there, there might be more of a, a variance between the top teams and the bottom teams. And in a 27-team league, it's a bit of a challenge. You do have one team uh, called Simon Fraser uh, University that plays Division II. Um, they play uh, um, Division II football, whereas the rest of them would play in the, in the college league called U-Sport. I uh, think, again, it, you have some programs that have maybe seven full-time coaches and you have other programs that might have three full-time coaches. The, the quality of the player, the quality of strength and conditioning is definitely better than when I played. I wouldn't be able to play now probably. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so it's definitely come a long way. Uh, the path for most of those kids, if they're going to, you know, the Canadian Football League, which would have about 200 Canadians playing in it, there's definitely most of them will, if they are professional level, would play in uh, the Canadian Football League. And there's usually, you know, approximately 10 to 12 Canadians on an annual basis playing in the NFL. And probably three quarters of them were played NCAA football, but there are usually about three to five players that played Canadian college that end up in the NFL. Um, I believe there's probably about 10 Division three players. So there's definitely some. Uh, professional aspirations when you play in Canada, mostly in the Canadian Football League. But you get the odd, again, kid that might develop late, usually a lineman uh, that has a chance to play in the NFL. Interesting, interesting. And uh, before we uh, let you go here, uh, we're talking with Lee Barrett, by the way, of uh, CanadaFootballChat.com. I want to give you a little bit of an opportunity here to talk about it. People ask me all the time, well, why did you decide to start a website and try and rank, uh, you know, some 15,000 high schools? I said, well, I'm either crazy or stupid, and probably a little bit of both is the, the correct answer. But uh, let's let's talk about your website, uh, why you created it, and uh, what, what, you know, people uh, that don't know about it will, uh, will know when they get there and what they see inside your website yeah crazy and stupid probably is the good terms to turn for myself well uh, uh kind of backed into it inadvertently uh in 2009 was uh partnered with a, uh, a business partner and an internet marketing company and then i had a lot of football experience i coached in some provincial programs i coached at university programs at in three of the four different conferences across canada so i had a lot of contacts and one thing when we went into, um, you know, the companies, I looked, it was all about, you know, traffic and, and uh, eyeballs on a website. So and it's to do what you know, and football is what I know. So uh, there wasn't any rivals or Mac preps or high school football, America.com uh, back then. There was some, you know, competent regional sites, but there was really nothing that covered Canadian football. So, again, we went into heavy development for a couple months, launched the site February 10th. 2000 and have never looked back and you know it's it's uh it doesn't happen overnight as you know it's uh incremental increases and incremental uh you know increase in coverage but that being said it's been a it's been a great ride not a smooth ride but i wouldn't have it any other way uh it's allowed our site definitely has credibility and credence now i i uh will uh, uh, participate for the, the sports network TSN, which is our version of ESPN in our college trap for the CFL. So I've done some shows for that. I did a radio spot for TSN radio last night, again, talking about some of the same stuff we're talking about. So it's been a fascinating ride. And, and again, we're a whole different scale in the United States. So it has some different challenges, but also has some different opportunities. And and uh, so, yeah, crazy is definitely a, a term to <laughs> that, I think. But, you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's definitely, um, you know, it's been a good ride. And at, at the end of the day, we're a player-focused site. So we don't get involved with the politics. We just want to promote players, promote the teams they play on, and then hopefully, you know, give many, many kids their 15 minutes of fame on an athletic standpoint. And then if we can connect the kids, whether it be south or north of the border, and I know we have, and I get the feedback all the time that many kids recruited because they're either ranked on our site or they post their profile on our site. So those are the things that we're proud of done for the players, what we've done for the kids. And, uh, you know, that's why we continue to strive to get better and, 
and 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 continue to push the rock up the hill yeah well you you, since i met you a couple of years ago on on the phone uh, we've talked about it i know your 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 heart's in the same place ours is which is a a passion for the kids and for the coaches and for the teams and communities and that's that's certainly the right thing and i guess we'll 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 go out on this note uh you you can answer it however you want but because we do have things like a matchup this saturday between clarkson football north your number one non-public team against the team that's number 11 in our high school football america top 100 uh, do, do you get a little pumped up uh, is, is there a kind of a national pride you go like ah oh, can we get these guys you know that sort of thing in a big game like this or is that something you don't want to discuss no no i think that i've definitely attended a few of those games because we again we're evaluating talent all the time so i've, I've attended a few of the games and um i won't be at any of the american games uh, this weekend however you definitely, uh, it's usually, you know, when you have both anthems played before the game, there's definitely a nationalistic feel to it. You definitely have a lot of the time, the, uh, at least the student population will be chanting USA, USA. So there's definitely that uh, part of it where there's definitely some nationalistic pride on, on the line. Um, you know, it, it, that being said, it's, it's once the whistle and the, and the first kickoff goes, it's, it's football is football is football. Um, you know, uh, the biggest challenges with our Canadian teams is they, they just haven't played that competition and it usually takes a few games for them to, uh, you know, catch up if you will. So, uh, I don't expect Clarkson to win this game, but I think they'll be competitive. Uh, I think it's a program that's definitely on their way up, uh, doing some great things for Canadian kids. And, and I think this is just part of it. They played LaSalle last year, uh, and we're 21-13 at half, um, you know, so it's it's a strong program that I can hear that will de- definitely give Ignatius. I know Ignatius has one of their starting corners, the kid from the Toronto area, Jetta Lad, so there's a little more uh, uh, to the to the matchup because I think a few of the kids on Clarkson know him. So, um, you know, there's definitely that nastic pride when you're whenever you go across the border. However, it's always been, you know, very above board and, and very, uh, um, you know, the hospitable host, uh, that uh, I'm sure every Canadian team that goes across the border is just thoroughly impressed. And that's why they continue coming back for more, even though most Canadian teams lose when they're down there, but they keep <laughs> coming back for more because it just can't be replicated in our country. The competition, the ambiance, the 200 piece marching bands, the 5,000 people in the stands, uh, and that's why all these Canadian teams definitely will continue to go down to the States to play. If, and uh, it's definitely a benefit, I think, for both countries to have that interaction. Well, Lee, you've done an awesome job tonight of uh, mm-hmm. explaining to uh, the American listeners out there what you guys have up there. And uh, just, uh, you know, proud to call you uh, a, a media friend, at least at this point. We've had more than a couple of conversations. But uh, congratulations on following your passion, doing some wonderful stuff for the kids and the coaches and the teams up there in communities. And keep keep up the good work. And I'm sure we'll have you back on the on the show sometime soon. Maybe, maybe when one of those uh, Canadian teams take down one of these behemoths down here in the U.S. Thanks for joining us today. Jeff, it's always a pleasure. Look forward to many more conversations in the future and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Taking a break, coming back with more. This is High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, You'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. 
The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting-edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Field turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. If you're scouting your opponents without Crossover's Game Film Breakdown platform, you're missing an opportunity to get a huge edge over the competition. Crossover service lets you upload game film from your hard drive, video camera, or other websites like Huddle. Their team of football experts will then clip and tag the game with player and formation info so that when you log into your account, you can filter the clips however you'd like. They'll also automatically prepare a comprehensive tendency report and down and distance report for your staff so you can can see exactly what your opponents like to call in specific situations. We all know that every coach spends countless hours preparing before a game. It's not about the time you put in, it's about what you do with that time. That's Crossover's biggest advantage. It allows you to use your prep time more efficiently and get an even deeper level of insight since you don't have to waste time setting up the film. Check them out. You're going to love them. You can sign up for a quick free demo at crossover.com forward slash football. That's Crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. All right, that's going to do it for uh, this evening's show. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Again, uh, make sure you tune in to Facebook, Facebook Live tomorrow night, facebook.com forward slash high school football America. We will have our live top 100 scoreboard show starting around 630 Eastern time. Uh, lots of great response last week. Uh, interact with us. Feel free to to. Uh, what, what, I know you do what you tweet. Uh, you just write us, comment us, comment on us, I guess, at Facebook Live. Uh, got some games going on right now. Check out all of the top 100 scores live on the High School Football America Top 100 scoreboard that is powered by ScoreStream. And we also have our state-by-state -state live scoreboards for you as well. Download the app uh, by going to um, scorestream.com. Go to Google Play or iTunes, uh, and you can get it there. It's a great way to get everybody knowing what's going on with your favorite team around America. We'll have our new Top 100 coming out on Sunday for you just before everybody else comes out with theirs, and uh, look forward to uh, having a great week of football here coming up with uh, five big games within the Top 100 and a lot of matchups regionally. That uh, should be a lot of fun, and you can keep up with them 
uh, through HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Again, we've changed the Twitter handle back to HSFB America, and uh, feel free to follow us on that Instagram. The handle is High School Football America as well. So uh, that's going to do it. I'm going to sit back and start watching the scores roll in, see what's happening here in the 10 games uh, involving uh, top 100 teams tonight, and we'll have those tweeted out for you and updated on the High School Football America Top 100 scoreboard at HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. For now, this is Jeff Fisher saying good night and good sports from Southern California. You've been listening to High School Football America.